How's it going folks? It is Matt back with another Digibyte video. Apologies for the lack of content over the past couple days. I took the weekend off. Yeah, I did make that video for Gemini, Kraken, Coinbase, and Binance. Um, I did voice over that on Saturday. Uh, Monday and Tuesday I actually had to work first shift. I typically work second shift so that kind of threw my schedule off a little bit. And then yesterday I actually voiced over a new uh, video kind of commercial thing for acceptcryptos.com where uh, companies, restaurants, etc. that are accepting cryptocurrency at the point of sale can list themselves on this website. I've talked about it before in a couple other videos. Uh, but yeah, that's just an insight of what I had going on the past couple days. Uh, in today's video, uh, ever since Donald Trump tweeted the other day that he uh, did not like Bitcoin, I've just continuously been seeing cryptocurrency or Bitcoin topics coming up in the government. Uh, so today I have two little short videos to play where government officials are talking about cryptocurrency. Uh, I'll shed some of my insights on what they're talking about. And then I will end the video uh, covering some of the Digibyte related news that has taken place over the past couple days. As always, this video is brought to you by ChangeAngel.io, the swap exchange for social good. So getting into this first video here, I'm just going to play it. If you've already seen it, it's a minute and 30 seconds long. Feel free. Feel free to uh, skip forward one minute and 30 seconds. The reality is, whether Facebook is involved or not, change is here. Digital currencies exist. Blockchain technology is real. And Facebook's entry in this new world is just confirmation, albeit at scale. The world that Satoshi Nakamoto, author of the Bitcoin white paper, envisioned, and others are building is an unstoppable force. We should not attempt to deter this innovation. And governments cannot stop this innovation. And those that have tried have already failed. So the question then becomes, what are American policymakers going to do to meet the challenges and the opportunities of this new world of innovation? Some politicians want us to live in a permission-based society where you need to come to government, ask for its blessing, before you can begin to even think about innovating. Those are those are the politicians that would rather kill it before it grows. But there are others who believe in the vibrancy of American ingenuity, American innovation, that recognizes our economy is built off of generations of entrepreneurs and innovators through competition, through testing, through tinkering, through iterating, got us here today. So that was the first short video. Uh, the person that tweeted this stated that this, this video made them incredibly bullish. And I agree 100%. In the very beginning there, he was talking about Facebook and he was saying that regardless if Facebook enters the space or not, uh, this space is not going anywhere. They can't do anything to stop it. Um, basically, those that have already tried to stop it have already failed, and this is going to be the future. So that was definitely a very bullish little one minute, 30 second video for me to watch. And it's nice to see the US government start to recognize this and hopefully start to rule, uh, roll out some rules and regulations and kind of set the framework for how this industry is going to operate. It's definitely not going anywhere. Uh, it's going to keep innovating. It's going to keep uh, you know, finding its way into different markets such as like tracking logistics or uh, even having voting done on the blockchain. Uh, blockchain technology is not going anywhere and I agree with uh, that speaker that uh, they need to not kill the innovation before it even happens. I, I think it was Bill Clinton that said it uh, sometime, he might have said it when he spoke at the Ripple conference that was sometime last year because uh, Bill Clinton was there in the early days of the internet when uh, it was kind of just getting uh, under its feet and up and running and he said something like you can't kill the goose that laid the golden egg and he was referring to regulations you you absolutely the space needs to be regulated but the regulations can't be so stifling and constricting that it kills all innovation or all potential innovation so uh, Again, that video just made me extremely bullish. And here's the second one. So I'll play this one now. It's a minute and 57 seconds long. Feel free to skip forward if you do not want to watch it and pick up uh, right when we get into the uh, most recent Digibyte news.
a lot of uh, background information about about Bitcoin and about the the, the uh, you know immutable distributed ledger and the benefits of that decentralization versus centralization. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people in this space will use a phrase uh, that you may be familiar with. There's Bitcoin and then there's shitcoin. Are you familiar with that phrase and what people might mean by that? I am. So could you elaborate on how people would differentiate the two? Absolutely. I think the idea here is um, Bitcoin has had a long track record. It, the network has been operating for 10 years. The Bitcoin network has been tested. Um, the decentralized nature of the Bitcoin protocol has been tested. People have tried to co-opt control of Bitcoin source code and push it in certain directions that benefit their business models. And this network and this protocol and its open source governance have withstood that test. It is robust. It has been tested, and it has had the benefit, frankly, of spending its first five years in its nascency, sort of operating in this environment of innovation and not having a lot of regulatory attention. Is there a central authority that could dilute the value of Bitcoin? No. Is there a central authority that could filter transactions at Bitcoin? No, that can only be done through the products and services that people utilize to access the network. Like Coinbase, for example. Absolutely. That okay. is a U.S. company that is regulated based on the facts of what its business model is. Right. And so just like in the U.S., uh, you know, the Federal Reserve or the Treasury doesn't change the dollar. The, the people at the edges, the banks generally do that. But with Bitcoin, uh, you can still engage in peer-to-peer -peer transactions like cash, correct? Absolutely. Uh, and uh, because it's open source code, you could have a wallet, correct? Absolutely. All these features are different than one, many of the things that people call uh, colloquially shitcoin. So there you have it. That was the second video where they're kind of educating Congress on the differences between Bitcoin and what would be considered a shitcoin. So uh, that makes me even more bullish about Digibyte due to the similarities Digibyte has with Bitcoin being truly decentralized and uh, the fact that a central company or a central government or whatever no central authority has complete control of the blockchain and that's going to be important for the adoption of these types of technologies if it is going to uh, you know reach that mass adoption level where people are using it uh, people need to be able to trust it and if a if it's not decentralized you know if it's only on a handful of nodes as opposed to a couple hundred thousand different nodes if it's only or if, if the company that created it holds over 50% of the ply, or supply, that makes it more centralized than Bitcoin. And I feel like those projects will struggle to gain that adoption or at the uh, very least, they will struggle to gain that acceptance at a, uh, you know, like a federal government type level because uh, the federal government or any government in the world doesn't want to use a currency or really use a blockchain that could be potentially manipulated by a company or some other government. So since the government has taken an increased interest in Bitcoin, I feel like uh, community members, those of you watching this video, it could be beneficial for Digibyte if you uh, maybe tag some Congress people on social media and explain to them the similarities that Digibyte has in comparison to Bitcoin, such as its true decentralized or true truly decentralized nature. And then it could also benefit to highlight some of the differences between Digibyte and Bitcoin, such as the increased transaction speed, the five. Um, five algorithms, five mining algorithms, and even uh, the real-time difficulty adjustment that helps make it a more secure network. So getting into some of the Digibyte updates. This is a tweet came out the other day if you've already seen it. Again, I apologize for being a couple days late, but as you know, I've had a busy past couple days. So UdoCrypt is officially locked in. So that means we've reached the 70% uh, super majority, which means that uh, Roughly seven days ago when this was tweeted, I believe it's sometime, uh, I originally heard July 19th, which would be tomorrow, but I feel like it's sometime closer to July 21st. So uh, whenever the Digibyte blockchain hits block 9,100,000, since we have reached the 70% supermajority, UdoCrypt will officially go live and this mining algorithm will replace uh, the Mir Grossel mining algorithm. Now, for those of you that have not upgraded your wallet yet, it is important, as this message is uh, saying for you, an important message to all users of the Digibyte Core Wallet and third-party services like mining pools, exchanges, payment providers, and wallets. 
The Digibyte network is expecting an important upgrade version to 7.17.2 on July 21st, 2019. Uh, the reason this is important is if you have not upgraded, once this goes live on or around July 21st, your wallet will no longer be able to send and receive Digibyte because it's no longer on the most recent version of it. So it's highly important, all third parties, exchanges, wallets, payment providers, etc. You need to upgrade to the latest version 7.17.2. This next tweet, uh, it's not necessarily news or you know like exciting news, but I just found it interesting. This is from Normal Books. Uh, they're saying the 2019 edition of the cryptocurrencies catalog is ready and we will be shipped or shipping next week. This new edition is updated with 200 full color pages and a crypto index of more than 500 tokens and coins. But the reason I found this was so cool, this book has 500 different cryptocurrencies that they talk about. On the cover, they have 25 different cryptocurrencies pictured on the cover of this book. And here is the part that I found so interesting. Digibyte is one of those 25 that are on the front cover of this book. So I never really heard of normal books and I didn't hear of their 2018 edition. Uh, so I can't really speak to the, the quality, you know, as far as details of uh, it, what all goes into each project they're talking about uh, but I am interested in looking at this uh, you know may potentially picking up my own copy of it uh, just to you know be a, an extra resource for uh, researching a project or if uh, I got a friend that's kind of interested in cryptocurrencies possibly this book could you know help answer some of the questions that they may be having uh, so next bit of news the Exodus Wallet. Most of you are probably already aware that the Exodus Wallet had the desktop version. I actually loved that wallet and it was one of the first wallets that I ever used for storing cryptocurrency before I got a hardware wallet. Uh, but I did use it and I still use it to this day to perform some swaps every now and then. Uh, you know, I use it less often now that Change Angel is around and uh, pretty much Digibyte was the only crypto I used to swap to on Exodus, but now that that is available on Change Angel, I kind of use that more. Uh, but anyway, uh, news on Exodus. They have released the Android and iOS mobile application. So it's basically the uh, Exodus desktop wallet now in your phone. So they have 30 plus cryptocurrency assets on the mobile version. Digibyte is included. Last thing I wanted to talk about, this is a Medium article written by Josiah Spackman. It is titled, Why Ethereum Should Use Digibyte. And this was uh, a couple of days ago, maybe a week or so ago, Vitalik Buterin was saying that uh, they were exploring the potential of using the Bitcoin Cash blockchain to as kind of like a short-term, oh, I guess it says it right here, short-term data availability layer for Ethereum. So in this article, Josiah breaks down the technical differences between Bitcoin Cash and Digibyte and has presented a case for Vitalik and the Ethereum developers as to why they may want to choose the Digibyte blockchain opposed to the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So I won't read this entire article, but I will provide a link in the description so you guys can read it. I think the, uh, I guess, logic or the science, the facts behind it, uh, definitely Digibyte would be a better option than using the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So again, uh, you know, as I was asking people to tag members of Congress, feel free to share this Medium article, tag Vitalik, tag uh, Ethereum developers if you know any, uh, but just it'd, it'd just be uh, beneficial to share this and allow people to see the differences and uh, potentially get Ethereum to use the Digibyte blockchain. So that will wrap up today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications, like it, share it, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys later.